This podcast is sponsored by W Energy. Uh, clean energy, drink for focus, no jitters, crash, or BS. W, be better. If anyone wants to purchase anything for W Energy, use my code Richard Augusto. You get 10% off off your purchase. Hello, welcome to the Big Return of the Gasoli Podcast. I am back. I, as I promised, I am back. This is 2024. I promise now to my new resolution for this year going forward. I will belittle every wrestling company in the world. I will review those wrestling companies, but I will also belittle them as best and harshly I can. Let's 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 start the show with Monday Night Raw. Then um, some news apparently. So let's go start. Alright, let's start Raw. Let's look at the match card. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre, the main event. Rhea Ripley versus Nia, Ivy Nile. Women's World Championship. The worst match, women's match I ever saw. Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax. The most clunky ass match I ever saw. Another women's match. Talia taking out with Baszler and Sorry Stark. So, let's look at everything that happened on the first Raw 2024. Some clunky shit. No. Mm hmm. Let's get some to the clunky shit, you know? Okay. Big lid for Sinai Jax. This botchy ass match. So Raw opened a little differently this week with Barrett Cole giving us and the light crowd running down the car as soon as they finish up. Lynch made her way to the out for the smash against Jax. The man was obviously underdog and Jax. He was a super different advantage. His size straight just different departments, but the man had a lot of experience. Being in versatile while the universal force may have the upper hand or on but this was a one side fight. It's a heel dominates Bay face kind of fetch. It was a back and forth exchange and allowed both competitors to be in the spotlight. After the break, whatever it is, Jax hit a massimo drop from the middle rope to the two count that had the crowd thinking the match was over. The man looked like he was gearing for the win. Jax hit uppercut nowhere before hitting or finisher for the win. Even there was a lot of sloppy moments, the match was not fun. And this is this is an example of how Jax did not approve and it's just shit in the ring. Lynch does bring out the best in people, but but this time it wasn't Jax this time. WWE has misu are misusing Becky Lynch, and this is why she used to go to AEW. She's a lot better. But you know, AEW women's edition still sucks, so they can Becky Lynch should go to TNA. Eh. I don't think it's uh, a little too, too a little too lenient. You know what? Let's go to Hollywood. Either way. All right. Mm-hmm. It was a change of pace. You know. Yeah. It's something. Yeah, Jax. Uh, she was that comfortable. So Lynch was bleeding after the match. I'll tell you that. I don't know. It was would have been fake to sell a punch. Yes, but. Yeah, it felt real or something, so Lynch bleeding, this is the first time. We got Kingston Uso versus Kaiser Trio Vance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cody Rhodes made his way out of the crowd, singing along music. Big Fire was the play. He's probably about wanting his feud and Shingen Nakamura is behind him, but Nakamura just keep coming at him. We got another video of Nakamura speaking Japanese. He said the story will end next week on Raw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The next match we saw Kingston team up with Jey Uso to take out Kaiser G.I. Vance. Uso Kingston to the best in the tag team wrestling WWE and log history together so they operate like wet old machine without much effort. Putting them in the team as soon as parent would normally grant to be success, but the match came to a sudden conclusion after Dr. Rinside determined Mincy could no longer compete. So Mincy got hurt. Well, well, it's, it's a good thing they got hurt. WWE got cocky. They're, they're, they got cocky. WWE basically got cocky the momentum. And and Karma punished them. This is so yeah, Vince got hurt because WWE was too cocky with their momentum. It's simple as that. Karma. It's karma. That's WWE's fault. They got too cocky with their momentum. They need to be humbled. They got humbled. Yeah. So yeah. So, that, but also, in the match, instead of having Kaitan continue, it was the right call. Well, I'm hoping Vince is okay, but this is karma. WWE was too, okay, too cocky and got hit against their momentum. So, let's, we move on. So, yeah. We also, truth for the other day, there was 
shittiest match I ever saw. Miz came out, watched a happy crowd new year for a dude's usual TV introduction. He was wearing wrestling gear, so he used to his clear to turn to kind of match. They tried to bring out Judgment Day, our true ended up coming out instead after a little while. Nick Duggan and Mysterio came out and told the truth he, won't, he wasn't in the group. As the insults yelling, the Austin Troop decided to take on JD and Dom. The truth so he was fighting on behalf of Judgment Day. The bot was designed to steal the show. It was designed to provide you last advance the truth of Judgment Day story. Continue the Bay Face run from Miz at work. Mm-hmm. Miz at but Dog and Don tried to trick Truth for hitting the Miz, but ended up leading to A Lester hitting JD with a finish for the win. The Austin Truth defeated JD Duggan and Dominic Mysterio. So we got the Jimmy reference, little Jimmy. Yeah, he's meant to be a heel, but not but honestly this match sucks, you know? That match sucks. And uh, the Mrs. Hurricane Ronald sucks. I'll give that truth is really what he can still cross a crook screw across by like nothing to him. So, so, so we had uh, that match was a shit show, you know, like a shit show. Yeah, Ivy now versus Red Ripley. The Creed Brothers came out now. They went back at the Wishing Lux so spotlight. So her entire match against Ripley, even though both these competitors are pros, are all right. Ripley had a, some height, size advantage, and Nile became an instant underdog. The battle came a couple of minutes. Of, his communication led to awkward moments, mere botches, but they seemed to find a groove. The match progressed. Now look looked great. Mm-hmm. When she started building up head of steam during the second half, when she started hitting moves like head stick and take down, turning into ET. Julie Chan for both women turned to Julie Chan. So this is awesome for now hit a strong super middle rope. However, Ripley was able to block a crossbody with a headbutt for hitting Rit Tai for the win. Chan and Tyler entertained performance. That helped put Nile on the map. But still, she. The match sucks. Ripley's a, some big old bitch. She sucks. Both. The women's match sucks. AEW could produce a better wrestling match than this shit. And, and the AEW women's division still sucks. Regardless. Ugh, anyway. It's all some crap show, you know. I don't know. I'm not criticizing them. A former WWE Champion returns to the Raw. WWE is a former WWE Champion with a show where K fought Sigmund. Triple Hall came to a chorus of booze. The Baraj got the crowd being disappointed. He was surprised to return. Triple talked about it. He proceeded to give a pro trash in America. It was interrupted by The Rock's entrance music. The great one, Huge Pop, came out, grand the fans alongside the aisles. It stopped taking itself for the kid for a gay on Apron to Pose. This was usually a rock segment. He said his eyes popped the crowd, saw the else heel, and gave him a new demon, demon nickname. <gasps> Mahal attacked the Rocky ended up getting upper hand, hitting a spine buster, followed by the people's elbow. So, I was getting ready to wrap this up. He referred to head to tape, probably if you Roman might be a possibility. Other than the rap, other, other than the last set. The whole thing was painted by numbers rock promo. This is what WWE wanted. When it works, so it was hard to be bad at it. Honestly, Here's my thought. Yeah, like, The Rock versus Roman, Chamber, Roman, yeah, yeah. I prefer it to be a Mania. Because I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck for this match. Like, I just want Cody to, lo- to ever lose. I-, I just want Cody to lose out on his story. That's all. Because I just don't give a fuck for Cody. I you know, I wish Triple H would prevent him from finishing, co- finishing his story. Like, have The Rock made him ever so many Roman. And had rub in Cody's face just for fun. You know, honestly, The Rock, I'll, The Rock's too old. Edge is a better crash talker than The Rock, and he's more popular. So that's that. And Roman is a is a formerly cancer-ridden wrestler. Mm. He ain't no tribal king. He's he's tri- he's tribal crap. You know. Anyway, let's. Uh, he, he The Rock did some precious Iron Sheik. You know. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, go to some another women's shit tag match. Baszler, story star versus Natalia and Tika Knox. Okay, women's tag to measure two segments this week. First was a quick video package to greed David showing up a club front Kane Carter, Kane Chance. What the fuck? The second was a tag match with Natalia Knox taking on Baszler Stark. Natalia's Knox are co- competitor farmer, formers. Baszler Stark as the slight edge. The queer space brought her MMA experience to the match. Stark brought her power to agility. We're at the bell rate. The show cut to a break. So a lot of pushed about as far to crush the picture picture. 
Basil and Stark have to win with a double T combination. This may be Philip and Gay Stark and Basil are much needed win as they build themselves up the contenders for the women's tag titles. So yeah, this women's tag match sucks. The first segment of women's tag thing, like Tane Chance, Kane Carter, what the, I mean Katana Chance, Kane Carter. Who the fuck their names on, you know? Some party girls? What the fuck Triple H is trying to produce on this fucking Raw? Like, Nick Khan should have fucking handled this shit in the bud. Like, Nick, if you're gonna, you need to keep Triple H in check. Honestly, fuck that women's tag match. Fuck that segment at the, before that, eh, whatever. So yeah, let's go to the main event. Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the Raw. I mean, for the World Heavyweight Champ, the Constellation Prize. Because they don't want to split the titles with Roman. They're a bunch of fucking idiots. So we're stuck with the World Heavyweight title. Okay, the main event in your edition of Raw was World Title between McIntyre and Rollins. They've been building the match for weeks. It felt like more like a pay per view bout, like a standard Raw main event. The Scottish Warrior was carried out of Gate Hot, immediately took control. Visionary had her receive several staples to close the war after his academy were already disadvantage. Bill a bell ring. Even rain, they had 20 minutes of show. They play a tight, competitive, but men, and uh, moments. And there was nothing to say. Good match, you know. Alright, nobody's a surprise final together. So, uh, okay, um, both men came to the to the wedding several times with some of the biggest moves. Both see avoid each other, type of storm and Claymore. Eventually, Priest came out to cash in the bank. We case, but back into a hit of the Claymore for he had the chance. Hit Rolls with a Claymore, but we've went for the pit. Rolls got a foot bottom on the rope. Scottish Warrior probably put up to a route table. Visionary counter hit a pedigree. This allowed him to hit the stop to win the match and retain his title. So, yeah, and see Seth Rollins defeated Drew McIntyre, retains. This was a good main event, but they buried Drew McIntyre. They buried his ass. Seth Rollins either dropped the title. I don't give a fuck. CM Punk rolls to WrestleMania. McIntyre needed a win. The CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania make more sense than CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. I'm sorry. That's what it is. You know, here's my final thought. Raw hyped up this episode by giving it a day one name for being advertised big return period of time matches. So the big only big return is The Rock. Receive a war section. Ultimately, it's not going to impact WWE progress program unless team's magic is Reigns comes to fruition, which is what most likely going to happen at WrestleMania. Cody loses the story. We got the Ripley Rune one setting their belts to find matches. Our troop managed to retain and pick up the win. Lynch helped Jax have one of the, uh, the worst matches of her career. This was supposed to be a special episode. It didn't feel like it felt like shit. Like The Rock showed up, but this was set up this apart. What happened to the root room return of Dudo El Idolo to WWE? Did it happen? And that's just stupid. Yeah, that's, he's probably going to spat them, but this is a cloud shit, you know? Honestly, yeah, WWE is still producing solid crap every week, so let's spread the trend, continue this trend in 2024, shall we? Alright, yeah, let's get to the wrestling news. Alright, let's go. 2024 is here, but it's not changing this year. The Dominant Reigns WWE Champion. I mean, Intercollegiate Champion got to a heck of a run in 2023. Since his arrival, found a success for NXT UK, Red Roster NXT or UK. He held the title for 871 days to the winning and take over NXT TakeOver. New Champ 2019. He eventually lost the champion. Echo, eh, whatever. Alright, let's talk about it. Like, Gunther became the Intercollegiate Champion. Yes, he did. So finally defending the title at WrestleMania 39 Triple Threat against McIntyre and Sheamus. He has defeated against the likes, defended against the likes, yeah. Woods, Vasali, Russell Reed, Chapa, Chad Gable, The Miz. So, yeah, he erased the past Hawk Time record of 450 days, the record for longest to the cut champ all the time. He now he has a new milestone. Apparently, so G got to join the ranks like some Pedro Morales, Ultimate War, Razor Ramon, Jack Hardy to start and a year as the IC champion. So, yeah. So now things have changed. So, yeah. Good for Gunther. He did he did what he had to do. Good for him. This is how you build talent. I want Gunther to take the world title off of, off of Tough Rollins. Or it could be CM Punk. I don't give a fuck. Or even Damian Priest with his cash. I don't give a fuck. We need to put the world title on Gunther. 
do it immediately. Get that shit done. You know, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, um, next news. Alright, next one. This is a big one. Kota Bushi applies after suffering injuries at Pro Wrestling Noah's show uh, last this night or something. Alright, Pro Wrestling Noah held the New Year 2024 show with Mason Singles and Chi Nomochi and Kota Bushi in the match. They rest 30 minutes. Bushi went over some rough looks spots and about caused criticism to fans, including when Bushi went outside Musa when he landed, grabbed his ankle. So according to Sports Hachi, Bushi suffered the injuries to both his ankles during the match. Nerdy had to be taken to the hospital in Tokyo as he collapsed at the match. What he did at the backstage re on his own to have a pain. When things then, this was Emma's call to take the hospital for a violation. So yeah, so basically Bushi made a name for himself and yeah, DT Pro Wrestling Noble success, tag teams, yeah. So he, he had a wrestle since Wrestle Dream. We will wish him all to be recovery, but Bushi stopped with those stupid ass moves. You're not fucking famous. Like, you're not, you're old. You're not going to be a great wrestler. Get over it. I don't care. All right. Now we go straight to the third big news for the day. For the for the next, after that, we're going straight to, to I mean, Dynamite. AEW Dynamite after this one, after this news. Okay. Um, okay. Right here. All right. AW plans for early 2024 event pay per view schedule. All right, AW returns world event end on show at Snitsa's Veterans Memorial Coliseum, Long Island, New York. Headlined by the AW World Champion Edge for Silver Joe. They already have evolution take place on Sunday, March 20, March 3rd, 2023, at Greensboro Coliseum in, in Greensboro, featuring Sting's retirement match. In a recent month, AEW have abandoned its pay per view schedule. Party plans to do war shows in 2024. These last fees were. Where AW will hold a pay per view in event in January, February. Unless additional WON Meltzer reported AW doesn't plan to hold another pay per view event for Revolution. And it's a, like Meltzer wrote, it's surprised they had two or three pay per view shows from the August to the end of December, but the plan go from World's End to Revolution on, on 33. It's unclear whether it'll be a pay per view show in April, but although they'll double nothing every year in May, is that the events of thus far. So yeah, mm hmm So basically we had that. January third, now tomorrow at January third. Cushion. Uh-huh. So yeah, uh-huh. Basically, I don't think they're gonna have a pay-per-view in February or or Wednesday. Like in February or I like, January or February, they will have a pay per they will have a pay-per-view in January or February. So yeah, pretty much that. So yeah, um let's go straight to dynamite now. All right, let's review Dynamite. Okay, this is the this is the new episode of the New Year of 2024 Dynamite. We have Maria May's debuted and other stuff. So, let's, all right. So basically, Maria May kicked off New Year Only Wrestling, making her first in-ring appearance, showcased the skills she developed in Japan, part of startup promotion. Timeless Toy Story, Uber fan, first match of the segment with Pack Car. From a fallout from Wordy's World End, Samoa Joe defeating Jay for the title, and Uncle Reveal as the devil. You already know what else went down. Build the momentum, says the onset of 2024. What does it mean for companies set to shift their focus back to what make great place in the first place? Uh, find out. All right, let's find out the recap. Uh, January 3rd, the match card is Swerve versus Garcia, Queen Amita versus Maria May. The Continental Time Eliminator, Edina Vingo vs. Cade, Brian Cage vs. Bounty Hunter Keith, and vs. Brent Trent Beretta, Darby Allen vs. Kodosuke Takasha, Adam Cole promo, mm -hmm. just a change to change to chance state of union, the AEW International Chant Arch Cast vs. Darte Martin. We go Samojo Adam will kick it out the show, Dynamite, show open a new AEW World Chat, Samojo cutting the promo moments after his. Main event with the over NJ of World's End. From there, a young Adam Cole led the new title Union Speed of Kingdom to the Square Circle to explain its actions that you may turn on JF using the generic reasoning to losing NJ's grip on AEW. Then he laid out the next few months of television by pointing out Matt Taven, Bennett, though Roderick Strong will be targeting Cole issue a word of warning to Joe. Ready on exit when JY erupts, take exception to the beatdown and let him line backstage start a devil's mind games. 
The acclaimed joined the Bullet Club Gold, chasing heels of the ring, saying, Tell the trio, Bowen, Caster, and Gunn seek revenge. White then, this is a great start at the show. Cole was a great lead heel. Rolly always excelled in. The reason Ryder won the match was kind of over the place, but the men did a great job looking ahead. Fans but they expect for the next few weeks. The tease of the acclaim, Blood Club Glow Dream Forces. The common enemy was a nice bit of business. So, Polar Austin is intriguing. So, um, mm hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, here's the thing it's weird. So, he talks about like Cole talks about signing Trong to target the international champion. Tayden and Bennett will defend the ROH World Tag Team Champions. Wardle, the AEW World Champion, at least until he's healed, in which he points sex. Wardle to hand the title over. Uh, yeah, um, we got the AEW International Chat Cassidy versus Dante Martin. Cassidy success with the AEW International Chat with Dante Martin. Wednesday night, follow up so solid trios from Friday Rampage. Martin attempted to answer the chat in mind game with some of his own, but Cassidy did not blink. Hang with a fast and high fly young star, rocking with the arch punch for the hard heart fought victory. A messy power smash of all the and Don Hossa gave way to return to private party as they Cassidy or Quinn who vowed to take over a tag team division. The march was good and the return was a nice moment for the Quinn remains to be seen how come at a private party. Tony Khan is based on him in in recent years. So Cassidy defeated Martin to retain. Mm, yeah. So yeah. Mm hmm uh, one more thing, like, probably probably putting every tag team I've noticed after spending the last few years losing really signing something, not to mention the champions, where he started a big bill by name's huge flub, indicative of the current tag team situation. So we go to Maria May, the Maria May's debut match versus Queen Amita. So Maria made her first ring appearance, of, it was this week, battling Queen Amita. Before that, I'm gonna say this, like, that, 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 at, like, after the match, like, some, when there was one part of that match during Cassie and Martin, they did, our character did this shit where he kicks, like, if they did that at WWE, that'd be stupid. But I'm gonna do the same thing. It sucks. They urge Cassie to stick being a serious champion. Stop being a fucking lazy sloth or something. Tony Khan need a command. I don't know if and told him to, to be a serious champion, honestly. But I'll give him this post match tag teams division. Good. Honestly, uh, a couple other things. Um, yeah, like the Samoa promo was good. Keep that up. Out of Coke it out Dynamite, yes. But I felt it was a it was generic heel shit. Like I get it, it was it is, but but it was a bit one dimensional. But they got the message tonight. So yeah, honestly, yeah. And unfortunately, uh, Mercedes Monet did not appear tonight. Appearing tonight, this week's Dynamite. I see her appear for next week's. Anniversary dynamite, yeah, that's what I've seen happening. So yeah, uh, let's again let's go to the Maria May Queen Minute debut match. Maria May first appearance of me battling Queen Mina in a match that was far tougher for competitive expected, and it was far impressive for once. May dominated early on, often all the picture break commercial break. Mina fight it up, turning into a stunning performance in her own right. Also, May stunner comeback, score the win. All to see a post match promo interrupted by the. Diana Prazo. So yeah, Diana Prazo debuted for Dynamite by kicking Murray's ass. Her May's ass, the Port Impact Knockout Champion. I mean Knockout the, the TNA Knockout Champion hit the ring. Joy May, Piquet and Square Circle for some mic, mic time. So Peraza warned May to told May to warn Tori Story she's covering the NBA Women's Championship. And not the message so he says told you so may respond there. So May got a big kick as the virtual was such a tall close out the segment, you know. Big dish for the women's Marazza, one of the best wrestling in the world last three years. She earned her fame to appear on the biggest stage to provide her. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wait to feed uh, Amita. Great gift I show her. Oh, oh, May early. Yeah, mm hmm. Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, I was confused about something. There was some aggression shown by May early on. So yeah, there was a nice crawl retro to Amia late. So yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is going to be the age of the Virtuosa. But I doubt that'll last that long. But anyway, because how Tony Cut books their women like shit. Let's hope Tony Cut does better with Mercedes Mounet and Diana Parazzo. You hear that? Tony Cut still, still suck. Like, he... 
basically like I want to, regardless, I don't think he's like a def Tony Khan won't defend, won't defend pedophiles. I was a mistake on my head. I thought Jericho was some perpetrator, some sexual assault, sexual assault on Charlie Ray. I was wrong. There was some false Nick Hosma shit. Fuck Nick Hosma. You know, he, he needs to get sued to oblivion. He needs to lose everything. You know, Nick Hosma needs to be sued and lose everything. Again, I want to apologize to Jericho. That was horrible on my part for accusing you. You are a good human being. I will try to learn better where I get my info from. Again, I'm sorry about what happened to Tony Jericho. That's what I apologize for. But Tony, you got you got prove to me you could book women better. I know you can't. That's ROH. All right, that's ROH. You did great ROH women's division. Let's try that with Dynamite, okay? Or Collision or Rampage. I don't either one. All right, let's go to Christian Cage State of Union. Christian Cage let a State of Union address follow his TNT Championship victory over Adam Copeland at World's End. More Bernie Andrews said how the crowd reacted. Drawing out the Cage words where fan chants of Luchasaurus, Testament Cody Khan's handling of the Dino Mask, Big Man later to continue to luckily follow the most despised man in AEW. Uh, I mean, despised man in AEW. Shane Wayne was great in the right work. Here, while Christian was typically says self, and otherwise, event was set was enhanced because of it. Mm -hmm. It's all time he'll run for Cage. He has been so great past for AEW. The blow my eye, a son Nick Wayne was the best beta business for TNT Championship. The crowd drawn on Cage out a chance of which is so proven a chance into the cinematic big man were working. So, yeah. So we got Darby Allen versus Chodosuke Takasha. Takasha dismackly defeated Darby Allen, the one of the strongest showing since this point. It was more repetitive and Atisha squash was more match a, a showcase for Takashi who has been an answer for every every Allen threw at him and being with some aggressive aggressive time strikes. This was the best ace he looked in a long uh, since the victory over Kenny Omega very much returned to the former younger star. So yeah, that Don Callis challenged him to sing for a match with Takashi Power Hobbs on the next week's show in Jacksonville. That's the anniversary. But the potential of hanging the Hong Kong's first loss on him, AEW only has to sneak for the potential face of the future. Mm -hmm. The match of rolling on area just catches the book at Allen Takashi late in the at day. Honestly, Connors has some embarrassment or riches from a talent standpoint, honestly. This was an aggressive match I've ever seen. So Takashi's uh, crowd reactions reflected in much. Alan bumped hard, but was enhanced by Tessa how the opponent strikes and throws. So yeah, Tony Khan should be embarrassed for not how to how to create a story. But anyway, we go to the Continental Eliminator match. Beretta, Cage, Keith, Hilhita, Vega, Beto, and a Continental Eliminator match. Has the AW title champion. K kicks the Saturday night collision at stake. Um, I mean. Uh, Barrett was a fast-paced match, packed four-way song with standing late push by Keith to score the victory, set by Shortout with Kingston. It was a big way for the guy who was among the right competitors and this is a one. <laughs> uh, Barrett was a guy on pots for putting the pre-ship while everyone was in zero hour. <laughs> Seeing a score when all was on the uh, editor. Another question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Khan has the opportunity to build on his sudden momentum present Beretta a new force title pincher, regardless of what it is. Also tends to build a shot guys while for one of the tall shot for line of sink all in the best gritty all again. This is not hopefully this is not the case this time. Let's hope something will happen, Beretta. <sighs> Alright, let's go to the Red Up to Fia Keith Cage of Vigino. So there was a amount of attention paid to Beretta and Lemonier Don Hansen that was that? It was the idea he may go to a personality change. Uh, I think that. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm. Now, honestly, the the cat missed the Giggles match. Make saying splash. That's stupid as well. But that's AEW's cameraman. They suck. They eat shit. You know. And now we go to the main event. Swerve versus Garcia. The Rage Hangman erupted a Rene Peck interview with Daddy Magic. They're out to beat down Samoja and Cole, and a member of the Ultimate Kingdom. The arena Garcia Swerve swept out to build on a recent momentum. 
as a score from the night's main event. The match was good at the time. It was suggested with strictly ultra competitive match to keep it as AEW Championship aspirations alive. After the match, Prickland pressed down attack. Garcia for Page hit the ring. He came out to face a swerve. He held between two men. Broke out. Referee Scrooge paled, pulled him apart. The show came to an end. This was a great finish to show the show. And one some spices out the ATW title seat. We have a Joe Cole set up Wardlow to be a dominant fixture. Strickland and Page are both eyeing the gold. Some moving pieces into my stories. Case Smith and Title Hunt make the show as interesting while Top of the Car has been a long time. Great collusion to the show. Mm, yeah. Great collusion to the show. Strickland defeated Garcia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's one thing I hated. Yeah, Garcia and Pitsana that started dance there and they tried dancing mid match, but predictable. But it was a it was somewhat of a fun spot, but it sucked. They should not be dancing during matches. This is sports based entertainment. Don't be dancing. Retards. I, I'm gonna say this Strickland is becoming a fixture in the main event scene. Something should not change iTunes soon. He is over it, he is money. Big money. The start to said Karate did not according to plan all hurt the flow of the things. Yeah. Oh yeah, this botch, yeah. Um not my problem, but you know, uh don't let it happen again. And one thing I'm gonna say, this matchup was full great dramatic near falls late. My thoughts that AW will never kill the emotional excitement of her first year, too much has changed for better or worse. With that said, I felt like episode of Dynamite is trying to go back to what so Joe used to be, wrestler Cetra, but surprise her too, a badass main event top things up. We were introduced to Undisputed Kingdom, saw the return of Wednesday night, Dion Peraza, while Kosuke Takasha earned a big win over Darby Allen. Christian Cage and Patrick Tina shine as as the world class heels. Queen Amanda showing out a big opportunity to swerve. But it's like the hangman page. We tested my few that could lead them to AW World Championship. This was a real good show. One may look back at the moment AW week is sorry, so time will tell we have been here before. Honestly, it's it's not a real good show, it's a meh. There's some moments I sucked and there's some that were good, honestly. It was still a quality broadcast, even there were some hallmarks of console booking that, that was dumb, I mean, cons dumbass booking that could be used some attention, you know? So, like, in it, I give the AEW this week half good, half shit. And we could go with that, so I don't care. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Let's go straight to Ring of Honor now. Um, here's this week's ROH Fletcher defense against Willie Mack. So this week's episode highlights on uh, Ronald Clark kicks off video package for NW World's End, highlighting Kingston winning the Continental Classic and the Connors ball in the match. We start with Rip Garrison versus Cole Carter versus Cole. I mean, Rip Garrison versus Sepetico. Griff Garrison defeated Sepetico with torture wreck bond to secure the pinfall victory. Yeah, yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, uh, see. Lance Archer defeated, defeated J.P. Har I mean, versus J.P. Harlan. Hello. Archer squashes Harlow in quick order with Blackout to win the pin match by pinfall. So, we got Dalton Castle, the boys, versus Priya, Priya Alavon. Castle hit the Priya Alavon with the Bangarang score the pinfall victory. Eat the page, Scorpio Sky backstage. Scorpio says Page is the most talented man on Ring of Honor, and he's one of his best friends. Sky said Page was there to support him when he gives you champion. Now he's there to support Page while during the catcher at Ring of Honor Gold. Page says he's the best version of himself. Better than Rain for anything and everything. Page said he trusts Sky with his life. It's, this is the year of the men of the year. So, yeah, we're going to get the men of the year feud. <laughs> see. Queen of Mania defeated Maya World. Mia locks the world. Maya World and the Juicy Lock to secure the win by submission. Shane Taylor promotions defeated Boys and in Infantry. Shane Taylor hits a Marcus Gravy Driver. One of the boys to secure the pinfall victory. The Tatsy Rivalry is a John Ring of Honor. Garrison Kohar backstage. Carter said they're the client. King Garrison is with the Marion Canals, but Garrison seemed on board with that jump by Skeptical that Jedicle left lying. Red Velvet defeated Garcia. Garcia Velvet hit Garcia with the mix to score the pinfall victory. Martinez Diamond defeated Leah Hirsch for Rachel Elring. Diamond scored a pinfall victory on Ilja Earn to pick up the win for his team. 
Holly Fletcher defeated Willie Mack to, re to retain the ROH World Television Champion. Fletcher hit the Mack with an apologize for a pinfall victory. Mm, um, Don comes backstage. Cal said he's exhausted. He hasn't slept since Bio Balance. He's worried about the date of the Ring of Honor. Cal said Johnny and TV cost him the World Television Championship, taking everything from him. Johnny TV, Valkyrie, show up in Mount Castle. Castle tells him to shut up and says he took everything from him. Johnny TV said they'll take even more. Castle said he wants to smash Josh in Johnny's face. Johnny said he will not do that. Makes up with her husband before they both walk out. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, El Vigo Commander Lee Johnson and defeated Ringo Loco and Work Horseman. Commander Connor Ringo Loco rolls up for a flash pit victory for his team. Celebrate Ring of they three grand men celebrate Ring of Honor as they t off go off the air. So honestly, what do you think of this Ring of Honor? This week's Ring of Honor. It was a pretty good episode. Of Ring of Honor, my book. Like there's some moments, you know, like what it is. So yeah, it's pretty much. So here's some additional news. Um, Rick Booz explains why Vince believes Vince power, Vince Man removed power led to his release. So, Boogs had thoughts regarding his WWE release last year. It was from his insight with Chris Van Velet. Vince Man had been rumored power killed his career at WWE. Boogs said he believes you look at things objectively. Well, he said this. I mean, if he gets to look at the objectively, Rick Boogs said it looked like at right next to you. I looked at, you know, I see Vince and look at the run and the manager saw a whole regime chain again. Look at the run. A lot of people said, I was injured. I can't say this, but I was supposed to be brought back early. Like, when clear yeah I'm two month two after rehab I was playing it out pumping out like, I got ready to bet my knee I guess good bet there just kibosh but, but he asked he believes someone dirty man hold a grudge against boogs and not sure the right word grudge is the right word it was in development I was told you have an awesome personality people like you in the crowd if you just keep get better in the ring basically with that regime I just all over her it's straight but at the same time I get where both sides are coming from so yeah, so basically, Boo's probably going to retire. I'll see him coming back for WB. I'll see him wrestle anytime soon. <sighs> uh, yeah. So, here's a, here's a bit full about NXT's original concept for NXT. They were gonna, the original plan for NXT was basically going to be living in a house like you, you're an ultimate fighter, actually compete to F. Actual alleged challenges, PG, it was from PJ Black revealed. But as wrestling business goes, time ran out. And they like that's why I show that like, we really have time to write a show. We restart pretty much everything. That's why the matches and promos were kind of off, uh, off because it was pretty much on the fly. So yeah, so yeah, it's pretty much crazy shit. Time ran out. Mm -hmm. So Danny Bryan said there are gonna be a few people that can fit to do Japan. Mm -hmm. So. So I think the fast style AEW matches, I think Figo, Emery, and Desperate will fit in AEW style matches. So yeah, it'll cause Miller to pop reach top level AEW, smart. So, mm hmm So, so yeah, basically, Brian talks about um, foreign and Japan stars that could fit in AEW. So yeah, basically like that. Well, yeah, mm hmm yeah, it's basically like that, you know. Honestly, it's what it is. So like, if you think about, it, yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Oh, right, here's some a couple more news. Gil's Katra star expires in March. So as of right now, she's not leaving March. For those in WWE, are believed there are others that she will be in WWE before the end of 2024. Um, my thoughts on that. Yeah, she's a WWE girl for life. So yeah, it's pretty much happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we got the now, like, so I will review SmackDown tomorrow. I mean, I, I mean, like, no, 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 like after our rage, like after some news, our rage after. S all right, one more news. All right, one more news. I will review SmackDown next. So let's find one more news. Uh, uh, I'll look at my notes. So, all right. Apparently, Litsky and Nikon are looking at Japanese ally for WWE going forward with Step One All Japan this week. Looking for a woman group ally as well. 
The Bitaka Ashashi are trying to make another go with New Japan now that Hiroshi Tahashi is president. So, something, something interesting. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much the that's pretty much the news we got. So, yeah. I don't think the NXT Japan will happen, but I see I'm gonna try to pull, push NXT Japan. NXT Japan. Let's hope it fails, cause it sucks. Hunter still sucks. Nikon's good. NXT NXT Japan should not exist. I don't know why it should not exist. Where you got Japanese wrestling? No more NXT Japan. It's shit. NXT Europe UK killed the UK wrestling scene. Let's we're not gonna have that. So. Um, yeah, yeah, so this is, so yeah, uh, let's go straight to SmackDown review. Alright, on to Collision, yeah, Collision. So, let's do a Collision, right, let, let's get to it right now. Alright, let's go, okay, Eddie Kicks is a weak way into his reign, the Connell Champions Ray Poon is fighting champ by defeating the Tyler and Beretta. The tag team division got a little attention and this week when Saint Dari Allen battled the workhorseman. RPK took on Body Matthews, Malachi Black from the House of Black. We also heard Alan Copeland following his TNT title wins. Company Kennel the title loss at the world's end. Let's get to this week's episode of Collision. Okay, um Sting Darby versus the Workhorseman. Mm-hmm. Sting Allen took on Anthony Hen and Jamie Drake. In the opening match, it was the action start for the bell when Hork Horseman attacked during the entrance. Flair was with them, saying Allen threw a punch at Drake during the mayhem. The bell fire rang once they were made to the ring. Henry and Drake had the upper hand over the team, former team champion, Captain Iceland, to a quick tag. It was a double team match. Oops. It was a fast paced match that only went about seven minutes. I packed a lot into time. Sting and Allen picked up the win in a predictable, entertaining performance. Sting and Allen defeated the Hork Horseman. So the kick. Henry used the trip Allen. It was it was a nice belt bump to sell it. So Drake moved when he tossed him out. Burned the clothes and bounced back. See Henry in the moon someone never get old. Allen's coffin trying to Henry was shot at perfect camera angle. We got Trent Barretta versus Kingston. Connell Champion Crown Championship. The Kingston made his first offense to Connell Crown Championship on Saturday show when he took over Retta. These two men were allies and allies that came with this bout of respect. Shadow said, Show mass city respect for opponents. It was hard hitting, ugly match. Peter, some stiff strikes, big bumps, blood out their chopper. Kingston caught Barretta on the nose. The Ed Mad King has been the run, best run of his career so far. But Beretta has been past month for my right how when you put in a situation like this. Well, Fortune for Sue's son. He's going to go out to keep waiting for the AEW singles title after a couple of near falls. Edit Kingston scores the win. Kingston has defeated Trent Beretta. So, so the Connell Championship, the retail so is technically separate. But when I defend it together, this is what it's called. At some point, Kingston may lose one or two months' titles. Kingston chopped Beretta in the face at one point. Brutal hit, busted Beretta nose up and regroup by ringside. Champ. Going like a champ, he looked like he had a broken nose. Beretta hit a nice real German suplexes. Mm -hmm. Kingston, the Kingdom versus Commander Brian Keith. Brian Keith and Commander were put on to ROH World Tag Team Champion Ground this weekend's current ROH Tag Champions, Bennett and Tavian. Keith and Commander won, they were earned a shot at the goal in the future. This was a match designed to get the newly crowned Tag Team Champion of Victory to make them look strong. It wasn't a toll squash. Keith, the commander of town, the commander of the crowd has gone a chance to know. Able to put on a good fight. The crowd's more vested. The second half, once the high school door starting doing door stuff all over the place. Keith, commander, also took them all the way 10 minute time limit, but Taven Bennett got the win less than a minute left. Kingston, the, the kingdom defeated Keith and commander. Keith has all over already a program, he should be getting get a contract soon. <coughs> There was something wrong with the audio at the commercial break. The commentators, the commentators had echo to their voices. And Cole versus um, Griff Garrison. Yeah, a Griff Garrison. Mm -hmm. Griff Garrison. Yeah. Copeland came up talk about how he defeated Christian for the TNT title. But was screwed over. Quill switch. He gave his contract. Worked a tall shot of cage all in their match. He should open child for someone to step up and fight him. But it's quickly answered by Grit Carrison with Mary Canellis, Cole Carter, 
Copeland tried to warn him, and Garrus slapped him, so Copeland told Ruff to ring the bell and proceed to take the young men apart. This could have been a two squash suck wash, wash match, nobody would have bad eye, but they actually worked a solid match for some men and made Garrison look better than ever has on AEW television. Was a match a contender, had a match of the year candidate? No. Of course not, but it was a legend giving an upcomer a stance to prove himself in front of Dallas and the fans. Clampland earned the fifth they managed to fight back against Carter after he tried to interfere. So Copeland defeated Garrison. Mm -hmm. Again, this is not how you could book Copeland, but it's Tony Khan. He's a fucking prick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Kanash, actually Maria Kanash should be on AEW TV more often. She got a great pennant presence. In my opinion, she's hot. Yeah, thick ass, but that's Tony Khan for you. All right, we got a women's match. Sky Blue versus Kara Hogan. One? I thought you were going to shout out two women's match for Mercedes. And uh, whatever, bitch. Blue has already aided Perman in recent months. Continue this week when she and Hogan step in the ring for a match. These women had in common. They are similar size, height, strength, whatever. Similar size, offense. <laughs> they had both spent time playing think of fellow someone else. <laughs> The difference that Hogan got off on her J card thumb on Blue Sonner family under Julia Hart. So, areas are much in common. Hogan and Blue Sonner had difficulty finding a groove. Pace feels somehow, felt all somehow, uh, almost like they couldn't make it out of scared singing gear. Blue got the win by submission with a dragon sleeper. So, yeah, this women's match sucked. I don't know why. But you want, you want to bring it to Mercedes, you gotta make your women's match a lot good. I feel bad for Mercedes Monet. She's going to a, going to a wrestling company that treat women like shit. A shit company, you know? Well, uh, Tony Khan better get shit together or or she'll buy, act like Sia Puck and try to quit. So that's, that's, that's a food of thought for you. That's basically food for thought. Anyway. Alright, we got Andrew Claudio versus Andrew Everett. House of Black versus FTR. That's the main event. The little giant pro wrestler got spotted close this week when Andrew Everett faced Called the Casanova, ever got a bit of an offense, but then a squash match. They gave Casanova the easiest win in their career. Casanova defeated Andrew Everett. Yeah, after that man. <laughs> like, after that, like, Hangman tried to talk to, tried to talk to Claudio, telling him that Hangman Claudio will have this week on Dynamite. He, Claudio accepted Hangman's challenge on Wednesday Night Dynamite. That's this Wednesday, so um, Jacksonville. So yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go to the main event. The main event this week was show was a tag match of Harwood, Clash Wheeler taking on Bunny Matthews, Malachi Black. Matthews Harwood stayed in with Fierce Jane when they tagged in. Matthews broke pretty good. They double team him after that's tag team and modern wrestling. Black Matthews and. Taking a broke club life is all right. Uh, putting on the ring, yeah, with easy recipe for success. It's cool. Extra pack, which is clean when you want to mount a main event on these show hard to find. Hell, all right. Uh, so yeah, mm hmm. Brody King tried to get involved towards the end, but it was Dory by Garcia with a steel chair to stare on their falls. This is awesome chance. Hart was able to get the win by reversing a pin on Matthews to keep him down for the three count. House of Black ended up taking him out and ended the show, standing over their haunches bodies, and Hart rang the bell ten times. Have to defeat House of Black. So, so that, yeah, mm hmm. That's a uh, couple of months. So it's funny how Matthews went for being 25 line and WP called one of the biggest, strong competitors in the AEW guy like commentators. Hardwood does everything a little bit at wrestlers. Anyway. The main map he broke a pin was make it was awesome. So yeah, my thoughts is so two hour wrestling all feel like it's a perfect length. Episode three collision straight wise true. Saturday show moved a lot of long and brisk pace, but so many times I share segment any time. A couple of matches felt like filler, but every match room is what matters at containment. Like watching Castle and destroy Everett attack team division with kind of defeat key for commander. The best match of the night was MTF's House of Black was not even a close race, although King of Beretta put us in a contest. The show, it's still a sucky episode of Collision. It still sucks, you know? Like, AEW still haven't learned shit. 
they're, you know, honestly, AEW has not recovered since CM Punk left a since AEW. CM Punk left AEW, you know. Yeah, that's my honest opinion. And you know, honestly. Hmm. So yeah, Tony Khan needs to be a better leader. Uh, so you got Mercedes coming in. You manage, you manage to bring it. You manage to trick the Yana to join AEW. That's a good start. So hmm. let's see if we go there. We'll see if we can go for there. Hmm. Anyway, this is this is the this is all right. This is this week's of the podcast. I'll see y'all next Sunday. Peace.